Did you see that? The train stopped in no time at all. And it still feels so smooth when you ride it. How does it work? Well, the roller coaster has magnetic brakes. Uh, the train has magnets mounted on it. And then there are these big brass sheets on the track. So that's what they are. When the magnets move past, they induce eddy currents in these sheets. That oppose the, the course that produced it. Of course, that's clever. Maybe we could have another look at the stopping train and see if we can see what happens. What do we look for in the video clip? This is where the brake starts. So in the beginning when the train enters the brake, there will be just a small current because only a small part of the braking sword is involved. And the braking force will start very gently. That is clever. So here we go again. Wow! Wow! We should be able to make a mathematical model of the stopping roller coaster train. The acceleration should be proportional to the speed v and to the distance s traveled into the brake. And then there is a minus sign because the acceleration is opposite the direction of motion. And k is just a constant? Yeah, it should include everything else, like the design, properties of the magnets and the mass of the train. I can put this equation into Mathematica. Isn't that amazing? It has an analytical solution. Neat. Do you think it would work for a real roller coaster train? Maybe we can compare it to the accelerometer data from our co-author Henrik. Yes, let's do that. Here I plotted both the experimental data and the results from the model. But I had to do a numerical solution because the track has a small downhill slope. It doesn't look too bad. What do you think happens to the brakes when the train is slowed down? They must heat up? Yes, there must be quite a bit of energy left at the end of the ride. I mean, we always use roller coasters as examples of energy conversion, like in this movie. The potential energy at the top is converted to kinetic energy as the train goes down the hill, and then again to potential energy and so on. And there is no extra energy added during the ride, so the train must have sufficient energy from the beginning to get all the way around the track and back to the station. But surely some energy must be lost during the ride. Yes, the speed at the end is only around 11 meters per compared to 19 meters per second in the beginning. And the train weighs around 7 tons. What do we get if we assume that all the kinetic energy goes into the braking force and is evenly distributed? Then I get a temperature increase of about 8 Kelvin. Can we measure this more directly? I have this higher picture of the brake just after the train has passed. So the brake is orange-yellow. What else do we see there? The train is green and the yellow circle would be the wheel. It looks like the brake is more than 8 Kelvin hotter than the rest. Of course. We took the photo of the first braking sword, which should heat up mo the most. I used our model to account for that, and then I find the heating around 12 degrees or so. It's not quite enough, it looks hotter. They cannot really heat up more than the energy available from the train. I also have an IR movie. It shows that the brakes haven't quite cooled down from the previous train. Let's look at the part of the movie which shows a train passing the brake. Do you think it will work? You have to read our paper to find out.